Hey everybody, welcome back. Today let's talk about Rocket Lab's not so successful launch and how it's going to impact Q3. So right around the two minute and 30 second mark, right after the main engine cutoff, you'll see that the stages separate, but for whatever reason, the second stage does not fire. Now I'll pause on this frame here. The entire frame seems to freeze up right around the same time that the second stage ignition should have taken place. So it leads me to believe that there might have been some sort of an electrical issue that kind of caused the, the entire second stage to seize up. But until we get an official announcement from Rocket Lab, your guess is as good as mine. So moving over to the spreadsheets, you can see that what we have visible for now is the entirety of 2022, and then the parts of 2023 that we either have or have guided for. So the guidance that we had from Q2 was for $30 million for launch services. Given that each launch represents $7.5 million, we can assume that what was guided for was four launches. Granted that that is no longer the case because there's only about 10 days left and we can assume that the Electron is going to be grounded until we figure out what the issue is. I think it's more than safe to say that there's no more launches in this quarter. As a result, we're going to bump this number down to 22.5 to represent three launches at $7.5 million for each. So like that. 22.5. The next thing that we need to adjust is the cost of goods sold for the launches. This is actually brought from a formula down below, so we'll scroll down to that section and we will see here that this quarter is representing four launches. We're obviously going to need to bump that down to three. So the number of electron launches per quarter, it's going to interact with this number here, which is the expected cost per electron launch. For simplicity's sake, I just have it matching the previous quarter. But as you can see, there has been a downward trend as far as the cost per electron launched. So now that that's been adjusted, we can go back up and we can see that we are still expecting something in the range of 22% launch margin. What I think yesterday's launch failure represents is a, a short-term negative that could potentially cascade into a longer-term negative. I mean, Rocket Lab still is at 90% success rate for their launches. But anytime there's any sort of anomaly during launch, it's, it's not a good look, especially for a publicly traded company like Rocket Lab. Looking forward, however, that's where things start to get a little interesting, as I'm not sure exactly how long the Electron is expected to be grounded for. So if we hop over to the other spreadsheet that I have that tracks all the launches, you can see that the after the last failure that we had, there was uh, 75 days between the anomaly happening, the failure happening, and the next launch occurring. So if that's any sort of indicator on how long we can expect the Electron to be grounded for, that takes us into the start of December, if I'm not mistaken. So using that number, we can hop back over to the spreadsheet again and kind of look at what Q4 might even look like now. Right, so we have this number for the time being, and the formula for that is similar as uh, before. It will hop down below. So we were previously expecting five launches for the next quarter, but given that we might be grounded till December, I mean, that number could be as little as two, maybe three. Um, so we'll adjust that down to two just, just for the sake of conservation. And we'll double check what um, the cost per electron looks like. Yeah, we're assuming a bit of a... Uh, yes, yeah, so we're assuming the, the revenue per electron is going to increase a little bit. I think the actual number is 0.62% uh, per quarter. The reason I'm using that is because it represents a 2.5 increase per year. Hopefully that makes sense. It's just a way that Rocket Lab kind of bakes in inflation to their costs is they assume you know, 2.5% increase in electron sale per year. So coming back over here, we're also going to assume that the cost per electron is going to go down a little bit, which I think it will. But I think once these launches do get start to get rolling again, I think this is when we're really going to start to see uh, reusability. There is a, a Jeffries conference with Colin Canfield, the investor relations manager, where he mentioned that all nine Rutherford engines are going to be reused on an upcoming launch. He actually said the next launch, but I don't think he meant the one that happened yesterday. Um, I mean, if it, if it did, that was a success because the first stage isn't what had the problem. The first stage is where the, the nine Rutherford engines are. Um, I think what he meant is an, an upcoming launch. He, he did say next, but I, I think it's just, you know, not a big deal either way. On top of that, not only are we expected to see nine reused Rutherford engines on an upcoming launch, but there's also been talks of even the entire booster being reused on an Electron in Q4. So now that we've made those adjustments, we can scroll up and kind of have an overview of what exactly Rocket Lab's launch revenue and uh, as a result, overall revenue is going to look like. 
And I mean, going from 51.7 million up to 20, uh, sorry, 72.5 million, that is, uh, where are we? A revenue increase of 40% year over year. So, I mean, even taking this hit, I mean, Rocket Lab's still going like crazy, right? Uh, it's not it's not the ideal situation, but it, it's it's bound to happen, right? Overall, I'm not too worried about it. Um, still looking forward to the next launch. The next one should be with uh, IQPS. Um, hopefully that's coming up sooner than later, but uh, time will tell. If you guys have any comments or questions, uh, let me know down below. Um, aside from that, thanks for stopping by and I'll talk to you in the next one. Cheers.